while you're getting seated, I just want to thank all those people who sent me birthday cards. My birthday was last Thursday. I was 43 <laughs> for the 20th time. Yes, 43 for the 20th time. We're doing well. Well, our message series during this Stewardship Month is based on selected passages from the Bible and Adam Hamilton's book, Enough, Discovering Joy Through Simplicity and Generosity. As we learned last week, we seem to have these diseases of affluenza and credititis. We can become a slave to our own debt, and then we can no longer have the joy of contributing to God's work and his kingdom. Our souls were created in the image of God, but they have become distorted. You see, we were meant to desire God, but we have turned that desire towards possessions. We were meant to find our security in God, but we find it in amassing wealth. We were meant to love people, but instead we compete with them. We were meant to enjoy the simple pleasures of life, but we, but we busy ourselves pursuing money and things. We were meant to be generous and to share with those in need, but we selfishly hoard our resources for ourselves. But the Bible and common sense financial planning offer solutions to these diseases of affluenza and credititis. And so we will explore some of those solutions today. But first, would you pray with me, please? Sometimes, Lord, when we take a good look at ourselves, we find out that, yes, we do have affluenza and credititis. But sometimes that just needs to be pointed out to us so that we can make a change to follow the principles that you have given us in the Bible in managing our finances and our possessions and our personal wealth. And so, Lord God, today, help us to hear these guiding principles and help them to put to use in your kingdom work. And all this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. In Proverbs 21, 20, Solomon offered us these wise words. He said, precious treasure remains in the house of the wise, but the fool devours it. Eugene Peterson, in his Bible translation called The Message, puts it this way. He says, valuables are safe in a wise person's home. Fools put it all out for yard sales. You see, many of us don't seem to be too wise about our finances. We are foolish when it comes to money because, you see, we want instant gratification. We want what other people have. Yet people who live beyond their means are living in a false sense of reality. They're doing a juggling act, often taking cash advances to pay off other lines of credit and making only minimum payments on their credit cards. That is a warning sign of impending financial disaster. And another warning sign is increased consumer debt. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells the story of a young man who was living beyond his means. He wanted his father's inheritance now to live the good life instead of waiting until he was more mature to handle his finances. Listen to this story from Luke 15. You probably know it. Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. From Jesus' description here, we see that the prodigal son had the habits of squandering and spending. 
Now, the word prodigal does not mean someone who wanders away or is lost. It literally means one who wastes money. A prodigal is one who wastes money, who, who is a spendthrift. Now, many of us struggle with that habit as well. We're not worried about tomorrow. We're not worried about what's going to happen 20 or 30 years from now. In fact, 50% of all Americans have less than 25,000 set aside for their retirement. We want what we want today. And the problem with that kind of thinking is that for most of us, the famine eventually comes. It comes when we have spent everything we have and even a little bit of next year's income. So we use the credit card and charge it, and we go a little further into debt. And finally, we come to a place where we find ourselves. We have nothing left. We have no credit. And we can't figure out how we're going to make it. Many of us live for the short-term pleasure and not for the long-term security and peace of mind. We waste the opportunities that are before us selling out for short-term pleasure, and we charge our future away. Many of us also ask, where did all of our money go? It seems the more that we make, the more we waste. The more financially secure we become, the less we worry about spending money here and there. We waste a dollar on this or that, and we forget where it went. Money just seems to flow through our fingers. We're not as careful with our money as we should be. There are many ways we waste money, but there are two primary money wasters that many of us struggle with. And it's not necessary to eliminate these two things altogether, but we should think more carefully about how we spend our money. See if you practice one of these money wasters. The first is impulse buying. How many of you, like me, have gone into a grocery store for one thing to complete supper dish at home and come out with a grocery bag full of food? <laughs> Here are a few tips. You're not the only one. Never go grocery shopping when you're hungry. You've been told that before. Shop for what you need only and make a list and stick to it. Buy what you need and get out of the store. And for those impulse items like a new TV or an iPad, wait 24 hours before purchasing an impulse buy. You may have a change of heart in the morning, but common sense finally takes over. I know this morning, Jen Schwartz told us she went into uh, Sam's Club to get a large bag of dog food, and she did, but she also came out with a backyard pool. <laughs> the second money waster is eating out. Now, I've tried to curb this one, but the issue is not eating out, but the frequency of eating out. Now, according to Kleppinger's personal finance magazine, the average American eats out four times a week, believe it or not. So a family of four were to order burgers with fries and soft drinks at a sit-down restaurant, it would cost with tax and tip anywhere from $48 to $55, depending on the restaurant and the part of the country where you live. And if that family were to eat out four times a week, 52 weeks a year, they would spend roughly $10,000 or more on eating out in a given year. If they would eat that same meal at home, it would cost them less than $4,000 a year. Money that they could save and spend on something more important or give away. You see, we have to clarify our life purpose. What is your life about? Why do you exist? Do you exist simply to consume as much as you can and get as much pleasure as you can while you are here on this earth? Or do you have a higher purpose? I would suggest that you and I have a higher purpose. And once we understand our life purpose, 
then we can spend our money in ways that are consistent with our purpose and our calling. Our society tells us that our life purpose is to consume, to make as much money as possible, and then to blow as much money as possible. But the Bible tells us that we were created to care for God's creation. We were created to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We were created to care for our families and those in need. We were created to glorify God, to seek justice, and to do mercy. Our money and possession should be devoted to helping us fulfill this calling. We are to use our resources to help care for our families and others, to serve Christ and the world through the church and missions and everyday opportunities. We have a life purpose that is greater than our own self-interest, and how we spend our God-given resources reflect, reflects our understanding and commitment to this life purpose and mission. Being able to accomplish the greater purposes God has for our lives requires some measure of planning. Taking the time to set goals related to our lives and our finances is crucial if we are to become wise stewards of God's given resources. Now, one of our scriptures today says this, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Once we have set some financial goals, we need to develop a plan to meet those goals. And a budget is a spending plan that enables us to accomplish our goals. Now, some people use an envelope system to help them manage their saving and spending and to stay on budget. I remember when I was younger, my dad would bring home his paycheck because my mom wasn't working at the time. And she would take the money and she would put it into different envelopes for rent, for clothes, for utilities, for whatever the needs were. And so when it came time to pay that bill, the money was there. And that's what Financial Peace University even says to do. Many people find it helpful to seek the advice, too, of a financial advisor. And for those who find themselves in the midst of a financial crisis, a financial counselor can help to work out terms with creditors and develop a workable financial plan. So whatever approach you choose, the important thing is to simply have a plan. Now, here is a plan with six financial planning principles. And many of these are taught in Financial Peace University as well. First, pay your tithe and offering first. Put God first in your living and your giving. Give your tithe and offering from the top of your paycheck and then live on whatever remains. I don't know how many times many people say, <clears throat> I'll give God 10%, but I get to keep the rest. It's mine. No, it's all God's. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, it's all God's. God allows you to keep 90% to manage for him while giving 10% to his kingdom work. Two, create a budget and track your expenses. Creating a budget is simply developing a plan in which you tell your money what you want it to do. Tracking your expenses with a budget is like getting on the scales. It allows you to see how you are doing, and it motivates you to be more careful with your expenditures. It's so easy to just give over the cash or the credit card or whatever without tracking where the money is going. Three, simplify your lifestyle and live, get this, below your means. Live below your means. Because this discipline is critical to the success of any financial plan, the sermon in two weeks will be devoted to this topic. And then four, establish an emergency fund. Emergency fund is a separate account from checking or long-term savings that's set aside specifically for emergencies. If you do this, it takes away a lot of worry and stress when emergencies do happen because the money is there. 
Dave Ramsey, the financial guru, recommends beginning with $1,000 and then building that to three months' worth of income. And when you have that amount, you won't need to use your credit cards anymore. Five, that means to pay off then your credit cards. Use cash or debit cards for purchases and use credit wisely. As you are building your emergency fund, begin to pay off your credit card debt and start using cash or debit cards for purchases. Some experts suggest starting with a credit card that has the highest interest rate. Others suggest paying down the smallest debt first and then you're able to experience that victory. And then you apply what you are paying there to one of your other credit cards so that you could pay that down faster. And then you create a snowball effect in paying off your debt. Now, some of this might shock some people, but cut up your cards as you pay them down so that you are not trapped or leveraged by your future for these present day pleasures, just like the prodigal son was. If you must use a credit card, such as when traveling or making purchases online, be sure to pay off the debt monthly. And if you're unable to do this, then it's better probably for you to just go ahead and cut up the card and stop using it altogether. And lastly, practice long-term savings and investing habits. Saving money is the number one wise money management principle everyone should practice. And, and we do not save merely for the sake of saving. Because you see, there is a word for that. It's called hoarding. Hoarding is frowned upon in the Bible as a practice of fools and those who fail to understand the purpose of life. Saving, on the other hand, is meant to be purposeful. And so there are three types of savings we should have. Our emergency savings, our savings for wants and goals, and our retirement savings. These six principles combined create a simple plan to help you become a better money manager. Remember, the prodigal son was welcomed home and loved by his father, but he had to make a new start, and so do we. And so the question I leave you with this morning is this. Which do you find more admirable in a person? Someone who is living at the edge of his or her means and thus cannot do things that really matter? Or someone who lives below their means and has a meaningful life of purpose? Do you admire the one who lives extravagantly or the one who gives extravagantly? You know, the Shakers had a wonderful song called Simple Gifts. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, t'will be in the valley of love and delight. Begin your financial plan now if you don't have one. I want each of you to be in the city and the valley of love and delight. Enough with the ways of the world. God wants you to discover joy through simplicity and generosity. Lord God, help us to simplify our lives. Help us to simplify our lives so that we don't have to worry about bills We don't have to worry about having money in emergencies. Free us from living above our means so that we have the extra money to bring joy into the lives of other people. You made us to not only care for ourselves and our families, but to care for those in need. That is the image you created in us, an image of a giving God, a God who blesses us with everything we need. 
And so, Lord God, if we are struggling right now, help us to overcome this. Help us to seek your help and help us to seek the help of professionals who know how to so order our lives. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.